All right. Well, the saga continues with the GD Tech Q1 Pro. So, um, a couple of things. One, uh, see that? The uh, Bowden tube that, well, not really. Well, the tube that feeds the uh, filament in the back and around to the uh, extruder, it rubs on the top cover. And so, I transferred the print lines to the top cover. So, we're going to have to find a way to address that. And, um, yeah. So, might need to be some kind of way to print a... Um, an extension or something for this so that it clears so that this doesn't I can I can take some really high grit sandpaper to that and buff it out and get it back but um, anyway so last night as y'all may have seen if y'all actually follow my content and stuff I started a print from STL flicks the wolfhead mace um, and I was printing the whole thing in ABS so I did the typical things. I started, a, you know, I set the nozzle temperature to 250 for the ABS because the temperature for Creality ABS is 240 to 260. I set my chamber heater to 55. I set my bed temperature to 100. And then I loaded the file and started printing. And this is what we got to. Now this, although you may not really be able to tell that much on camera, looks absolutely amazing. Now this was at I think a 0.16 layer height. I was doing it a little higher layer height. Uh, I'm not going to do that again because it was going to take way too long. But this is also um, the 3D honeycomb infill that is not new but it's kind of new to orca slicer and it prints faster than gyroid and it is very strong this i can there is zero flex to this infill um so and it looks really cool this is creality abs i also did a 0 0.05 by 0 0.05 fuzzy skin on this because I was hiding the layer lines, as you can see, unless you get way up here, you can see the layer lines there. But if you're looking at it like a normal person, you can't see the layer lines at all. Um, bottom layer, first layer, look at that. Absolutely flawless. But anyway, so we were about 60% done. I went to bed. Got up this morning, came in here, check on it. It's still running, printing fine. And then, just for some reason, right before I headed off to work, I came back in and checked on it, and the print head was stopped right about here. And it was just sitting there. Well, that's something that I have, unfortunately, become familiar with, because it has done that two other times, um, and it did it... Uh, both times after I had started a print and the print was I don't know less than 20 layers in it wasn't that far in and I decided okay I wanted to change the cha chamber temperature um, and then I went to change the temperature and it seemed fine and then the printer locked up it did it once I didn't think about it because I wasn't thinking about it did it again same scenario I tried to change the chamber temperature and it froze the machine up um, now I didn't last night I didn't try to change the the uh, chamber temperature this time uh, it was set at 55 and that's where I had left it um, and like I said it had froze up again um, I think it had froze up right about there. You can kind of see a little bit of the indention of the nozzle. Uh, but by the time I had come back in here and checked on it before I left for work, I don't know how long it had been frozen. Um, it was still displaying 
the print temperatures on here it was still showing the nozzle at 250 it was showing the bed at 100 it was showing the chamber at 55 and it wasn't responding to anything I couldn't stop it I couldn't pause it I couldn't do anything the only solution I had like I've had the previous two other times was to power cycle the printer and so I did that and when it turned back on and booted back up all the temperatures were about down to ambient so I know that it had been stopped for a while long enough that everything had already cooled way down uh, because it wouldn't have cooled down that far in that short a time as it took it to power cycle and come back on so um, the print you know came right off the print bed easily because everything was cooled down and ABS releases when when stuff is cooled down um, so I reached back out to GD Tech support and I guess it is another, it is an issue with the chamber heater because they are sending me something called an adapter plate and a replacement cable. I don't know if they're sending me a new heater or if they're sending me a component of the chamber heater. Um, but they're sending me a new cable and they suggested that I do not use the chamber heater until I get those parts and make the necessary repairs. So, okay, so I'm going to start this print again, um, but I'm going to do it old school. I'm going to do it like you would do any enclosed printer that doesn't have a chamber heater and you just heat the bed up, let the printer heat stoke a little bit, get the chamber temperature up. Um, you know to around 50 ish if you can and uh, 55 50 so you just let it sit for a while and just heat up on the inside and then I'm probably gonna bump the uh, bed temp up to 110 or something just to kind of help keep it warm in there fans are off you know you're not using fans during ABS so um, um, all that and I hope that it's gonna be fine without the chamber heater but I mean, I sure it will be because you can print ABS on my K1. I could print ABS on my P1S2, and neither one of those have chamber heaters. It's just about letting the printer heat soak for a minute just to get the temperature up a little bit inside the print chamber and, uh, and then keeping the fans off and don't open the door. Keep it completely sealed. Do not let even a stray gust of air, if you open that door for just a second, can let enough cool air in there that will cause the, the, the ABS to warp or release from the bed or something. So you just leave it, start it, don't touch it, go. Um, so anyway, we're going to try this again, but I was happy with how this was turning out. This was my first ABS print, and I'm doing a prop with it. Uh, because I plan on doing more props in ABS um, and this was looking fantastic I was trying to do the fuzzy skin so that it would have kind of a um, kind of a uh, not forged but cast kind of look like they poured molten metal into a cast and had this effect so you kind of have the grain kind of the the sand kind of grain look on the surface you know but yeah, I mean, it was it was looking fantastic, you know. And this this part is solid. This part is so strong. Um, but you know, it's that's ABS. So anyway, all right. Well, we're gonna try again, and uh, I'll let y'all know. Thank you much.